Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. This video we're going to be covering zone crossings and I'm going to show you two different examples of um, how you could use zone crossing in um, on your setup. Now, first of all, zone crossing is something that I would only recommend using. Um, I use it to help eliminate false triggers during times of day that there is a lot of wind going on uh, and blowing trees back and forth. Um, I have different profiles set up to use zone crossings during specific times of day. And then um, during times of day that there's not a lot of shadows, I have zone crossing turned off. Zone crossing is going to directly affect your triggers and your record settings. So for example, if you have um, only one triggered uh, to record when triggered, if you have zone crossing set up, anything that's moving within a zone that you don't have uh, an object that crosses from one zone to another, it's not going to record that as motion. It's only going to record when an object moves from one area to another. And also it's going to affect your alerts. So um, if the camera doesn't trigger, it's not going to send any alerts anyway. So again, zone crossing I would use during specific profiles during certain times of day that you would like to have um, less false alarms. Now here's an example of why you might want to set up a zone uh, crossing for your camera. On this particular camera throughout the day, if you notice, um, this tree um, sway quite a bit on a sunny day. And I was getting a lot of false triggers as you can see down here in the timeline um, when the tree sway too much. I wanted my motion sensitivity set really high because you can't set up sensitivity based on each zone. So anything that was, and if anybody was walking down the road and I had my sensitivity set too large, then I wouldn't catch anybody walking, but it would cut down on the false alarms. If I set my motion sensitivity too high, basically, you know, to detect a smaller object walking down the road, these trees swaying in the wind would set off the uh, these triggers down here. So what I did is I set up zone crossing for this camera. What I did is I set one zone here in the road for an area. I set up another zone here in a second. I'll show you on the left side of the driveway and another zone here on the right side of the driveway. And this basically cut out my false alarms on this camera almost indefinitely when it's a sunny day. And I was still able to get alerts for what I wanted if anybody was walking down the road and then walked into my driveway or if anybody walked from the right, uh, left side of the screen here to the right side of the screen. So let's go ahead and jump right in real quick and I'll show you how I did this. Now to go and set up the zone crossing like I showed you in the previous example, what you want to do is go into the camera that you want to set up into the properties, then go into the triggers tab. Uh, under motion sensor you go into configure and then the first thing that you want to do is the use zones and hotspots because you want to set up your zones. Now by default like I showed you earlier zone A is going to be your default zone so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out zone A and I'm going to set zone A for my road zone. So I'm going to draw a square here like this. Now I'm going to set zone B as the left side of the driveway. Now when setting up these zones, it's important that I recommend that you do not overlap zones. So like leave a little bit of a gap in between these. And then zone C, we're gonna set up as the rest of the screen here for the right side. And I'm gonna do this area too behind the driveway. Now lastly, what I wanna do is set up zone D. And zone D is going to be the entire screen. And I wanna show you why, because if you don't overlap here, let me just go ahead and save this and then show you what it looks like for when I black out the mask areas. Blue iris is only going to be monitoring the zones that are in color and these areas here that are blacked out, the areas that were not overlapped, are not monitored. Now this is very important because if something that happens here in the uh, road here and it crosses into this part of the screen, it will not set up a trigger even if you have your zone crossing set up. This is because blue iris is not monitoring this little black area here. So these two images are not connected. So if anything moves from the top here into the road into the driveway, or from the left side of the driveway to the right side of the driveway, and you have a zone crossing set up, um, it's not going to recognize it because it's not seeing the area, or it's not being, it, the area here in between these two zones is not being monitored. So these zones are not connected whatsoever. To fix this, what you want to do is to set up a fourth zone for your masking area. And I'm going to just use zone G down here. And then just do invert. That way the entire area is selected. And then say OK. So now I have my zone set up. 
and then I have the areas that's in between the zones is still being monitored for motion, but it's not part of zone A, B, or C. Now if I go into my Triggers tab, and under Object Detection, this is where you're going to be able to set up your zone crossing. So if you remember, zone A is up here in the top, zone B is down here in the bottom, and zone C is here on the right. Um, and here if I do A-B, this means anything that, ha this is a two-way zone crossing. So if anything originates on the road here, which is zone A and crosses into zone B, it'll go ahead and trigger my camera. Or vice versa, if anything happens here in zone B and goes into A, it'll go ahead and trigger. We also want to have an, a rule set up for B to C, and then also A to C. So to do this, you'll separate your rules by commas, and we'll say from A to C, and then another comma, and then also B to C. So this has all of my zones covered. So if anything happens from A to B, or A to C, or and, you know, any ways whatsoever that they cross in between the zones, it's going to go ahead and trigger. Uh, I'm going to go out here and show you this uh, rule in action and uh, how it works. So let me go ahead and save this. Now I have my zone set up. I got my object crossing zones rules set up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this camera and show you how this works. Now here in a minute, I'm going to walk from the road into the driveway, and since I cross from one zone to another, you'll notice the green rectangle around me will turn red, and this means that it's going to fire as an alert. Now I'm going to move from the left side to the right side of the screen and show you that, again, when I move into one zone to another, it'll go ahead and fire this as an alert. Even though I have my camera sensitivity set extremely high, and it's detecting all of this other motion, um, it is not detecting, it's not sending alerts because I'm not moving from one area of the uh, camera to another. Now in this example, this camera was getting a lot of triggers based on the sh uh, shadow of the tree swaying during different times of the day. One way that I can recommend to eliminate this is to use the zone crossing. What I would do is I would set up three different zones on this particular example. I'd set up a zone here, here, and then lastly a zone here. What this is going to do is allow you to um, set up zone crossing. So if anybody would move from zone A to B or from C to B, it would go ahead and set it up off as a trigger. But with this tree swaying in the wind in zone B, it wouldn't set off any type of alert. So I hope this video helps you understand how zone crossing works and some of the implement implementations that this would be in your setup. Um, again, I I personally use zone crossing only during times of day that there's extremely windy conditions. I have different profiles set up for that specific time of day. Um, you can go in here under your options tab and under schedule and set up that time of day that you want that profile active. Um, in my case, it's only for about two hours, so I don't have it set up now, but I would draw a rule during that time of day that you would have um, very windy conditions such as, you know, from... Uh, 12 to you know whenever and then have that time of day set up for um, object detection to be enabled and then during the other times of day have it disabled that way if there's any slight bit of motion in any any part of the screen you'll be alerted so hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching have a great day